Good evening, everyone. Y'all are going to have to excuse the time frame. I know that it's late, but as promised, hey, Stephanie, I wanted to do this live demo. It's still Friday, right? So I'm not extremely late. It ain't midnight yet. Um, yeah, it's still, it's still pretty early, right? Anyway, as promised, Hey, Kelly, I see you signed up for the class. <laughs> um, thank you all so much for joining. I know it's late and I know it's Friday and normal people are probably out having a great time. Meanwhile, I'm here working on orders and stuff. But as y'all can see, I have a little subtle theme going on. I'm excited. I think I have six slots of the 20 slots that are available left um, for the pom-pom tutorial class. Um, I will send out... Uh, Oh, really? I'm going to send out a, uh, an email just explaining what uh, materials you'll need to have and um, where you'll need to be in order to uh, come into the, the custom, um, to the pom-pom group. Okay, so this demonstration is going to be, I'm using pink for hair. Um, one of the things that I like to do, y'all, y'all know, um, I don't really like to use browns and black for hair. Um, I do it mainly because that's what most people typically order or ask for. But if you leave it up to me, my dolls will have pink hair and yellow hair and orange hair and blue hair and all of that. Um, but before I get into that, I wanted to show y'all. Y'all know that purple ballerina that I was showing y'all earlier? These are her eyes. Now, I use 20 millimeter eyes. Hey, Red Pieces. Thank y'all for joining. I use purple, pale purple, um, and uh, purple sparkles for her eyes. And they're kind of big. These are 20 millimeters. Um, and then I was waiting on my customer to let me know what kind of lips she wanted. Because I have these really cool purple mirror lips for all my purple fans. And y'all got to excuse my chip polish. This is one of the reasons why I don't like to polish my nails so much because I actually, and y'all see I got glitter all in my fingernails, um, they chip and then I don't have time to just be sitting there trying to get it off. Anyway, look at these lips. So the purple ballerina is going to have these mirror lips and these sparkly purple eyes. And she is coming out amazingly. Like, well, she pretty, she's pretty much done. She just needs her... Um, she just needs her face done. Okay, so in order to do these braids, you are going to need, and I know red pieces, you're about to lose it. Um, you're going to need these little tiny hooks. So I have here the 2.75 millimeter, and this is when I'm trying to be extra. You don't necessarily need this one, but you cannot really use anything smaller, I mean anything bigger than a 3.25 millimeter. Let me find it. So this is the other side. <laughs> yes, the ones you call the devil. But this is the 3.25 millimeter. I don't know why it's not focusing. But, well, here's the thing. The only way you're going to get those pony beads on there is if you use a smaller size hook. You could use the larger pony beads, which I recently discovered are really great when you put them with the other ones. But... I don't know. I can't imagine that your hands are any bigger than mine. I have monstrous hands. I don't like doing tiny stuff, but I do value my hooks. Okay, so let's get right into it because I think I've talked too much. So basically, I'm going to do my slip knot. And I use the slip knot for a lot of things. Hey, Melissa. Um, and so here's my slip knot. And I'm actually, because I'm using a four ply worsted weight. Hey, Jamina. Y'all up late tonight on a Friday, huh? I'm actually not going to use the 325 because I'm using a, this is Red Heart, I believe. I don't know. It's old. It don't have a label. It's, this is all I have left of it. I believe that it's Red Heart, just the pink. I don't remember. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so basically, oh, wait, you know what? Let me forget that first. Before I do that slip knot, I actually have to thread the yarn, thread a bead on the yarn. This is really important. Oh, Oh, so it's early for you. It's um, it's almost 11 o'clock here, I believe. It's 10 something. I don't know. But you can use a yarn needle, right? And what you want to do is I have here, I'm going to show you all two different ways. Um, hey, Diana, I didn't even know you was on here. 
So here is a charm that I'm going to use. I'm going to use this charm. Um, and I actually think that this yarn needle might be too big to go in that hoop. So hold on, because I probably don't even need the yarn needle. I could probably just, or you know what? See, this is why, this is why I always got to have my trusty darning needle. Playing around with the yarn needle, that yarn needle be trying to, you know, it don't always work out. But the darning needle, that's my hero. It's my crochet hero. See that? And now I can go through this charm. See that? And I'm going to put one of these on the bottom as well. Um, because I'm going to show y'all what it looks like when you have a charm and then when you don't have a charm. Right? So we're going to push those all the way down because we don't need those until we're finished our chain. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make our slip knot. And I'm going to leave a long tail. I like to leave tails because I don't like for there to be any room for error. And so we get it going and I'm going to do about a chain and this is really easy. I, I'm probably just really making it a long thing, but it's really not. So I'm going to chain, let's say 15, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. See that? You know what? Hey, Mika. Okay, you know what? I'm actually going to add five more because it's, it's kind of short. I want it to be a little longer. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now, this is what we do. We bring up that bead or charm, whichever one. You bring it up. This is going to serve as your stopper. This will allow you to keep beads on the uh, on the braid. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna slip knot, slip stitch all the way up. So going into the second chain from the hook, we're gonna work around this bead just so that it holds our place at the end. See that? So it's a slip knot. Hold on, and because I'm working with this tiny hook you know there's a little bit of resistance but basically we're going to slip stitch all the way back up all the way back up and i'm going to show you all the significance of that because remember we're doing braids right and so you kind of do want them to look like the texture of the braid and and just so y'all know y'all see how this is imagine a doll with a whole head full of these braids how long that would take especially considering how I'm deciding to do it so I need y'all to understand sometimes that when y'all are hustling and y'all are spending y'all time which again I actually had I saw this post today that I thought was just so indicative of what a lot of us don't recognize and the post was time is non-refundable whatever you put in you can't go back and reverse time and get that effort back you can't do that so you be mindful of how much you charge in people for the time that you've spent. Not just your skill, not just the materials. So you see this? See that? And that bead serves as a stopper. Now I'm at the end. I'm going to take my scissors. Hold on. See? I'm not paying attention. I don't think I brought my scissors to where I am. Oh, okay. I did. Okay. And I'm going to cut it all the way down here. Careful not to mess up that charm because I still want that charm to stay there right and I'm gonna fasten it off like that now the thing about it is because this is a red heart and it is a worsted weight yeah you know what it's things that you're learning as you go and it's important that as I learn I have to share it because people don't understand that and guess what it's not their job to know certain things it's your job to know and you charge accordingly and if they don't understand that then they don't understand that I'm trying to figure out a nice way to respond to this woman who wants me to work for her now she ain't saying that but that's what she's asking me if she wants me to do dolls for her she talking about mass producing like ma'am I'm a person I'm not a machine 
Why are you talking to me, a single individual, about mass production? Anyway, I'm trying to figure out a diplomatic way to say it without being aggravated or annoyed or offensive. So that's why she's just going to wait. But okay, so y'all see this and this is where the, uh, the yarn needle comes into play because I could put both strands in at the same time. And so I'm going to put them there like this. And with the pony beads, I can just string them on. So I'm going to put like if I, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm tired of people with that foolishness. Oh, I'm a children's book author. And I want to pay you to make dolls. So, no, you don't, ma'am. You don't want to pay me because if you knew how much it cost me to do one, you might want to do something different. And so then we push it all the way down. Now, you see how much resistance was met by that? This is done with a three point. <laughs> this is done with a three, a 2.75 millimeter hook. This is as small as you can get with this thickness of yarn. And there was still a little bit of resistance and there's still, still a little bit of stiffness with the braids, right? How many did I put on here? One, two, three, four, five. How many I got here? One, two, three, four. Let me put another one out because I'm going to show y'all the difference with the charm versus with the, with the bead. And, and just so y'all know how, how serious I am about this beading stuff. Let me show y'all what the bead game is like. Now, these are just beads. No, no, I don't want to consult with people that want me to do machine work, red pieces. I don't got the patience for that, surprisingly. Um, I'm just going to explain. Ma'am, listen, this is what my going rate is. Uh, you know, you want a manufacturing company because I'm really over people constantly asking me to be a, to do machine work. It's, it's annoying and insulting. Like, you got your business. And you trying to pay me, who has her own business, to work for you. I'm going to need you to back off. Yeah, they, it's a regular thing, and I'm starting to lose my patience. So I think it's important that I edify, you know. So I just really need to explain. What you want to do is you want to get your money up, and you want to go to China or a manufacturing company where you can get things mass-produced for a cheap amount of money. I'm a person, you know, every now and then I got to eat and sleep, right? Probably want to bathe every now and then probably want to kiss somebody I love or something. I can't do that if I'm working for somebody. So <laughs> let me just let y'all know just a little side information. So these are the beads that are not sorted. Um, for those of y'all that are familiar, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, get my name. <laughs> right, red pieces. I might want to get these jacked up nails done. Um, but for those of y'all who know me, y'all know, well, I actually have bags of beads. Like I have literally a bag of bows and hair stuff that are that are sorted in color order. So I have a bag of beads and, and barrettes and things. It's nothing but orange. Then another one with green, you know what I'm saying? Like they're all sorted. These are not sorted yet. I have to go through them. Man, listen, I need to get my life. Um, but these I got from a children's, uh, a teacher store. And as y'all can see, they're clear beads with glitter in them because I ran out of purple glitter beads. And so I saw this and it was like 7 or $8 for this big bag. I don't even know how many came in there, but it's a lot. So basically, and I thought I'd use this yarn because y'all know I don't like to waste nothing when I'm working. So these braids will probably be going on one of my troll designs because I don't like to just waste stuff. Um, yeah, I do got a problem. It's a good problem, though. <laughs> so we're going to do that again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't need... Ain't no such thing as glitter rehab. I don't know what you talking about, Diana. You already know. I'm about to put people in and, and I'm about to recruit glitter fanatics. Um, okay, so if y'all were paying attention, what is the first thing that I should be doing, right? So we talked about this. Um, to get this length and this width, I am using a size 275 because this is a four ply. That's right, bling bling all day. Um, I have to, everything I do has to sparkle. For those of y'all who are just joining, we are making braided or beaded braids. 
chain 20. <laughs> right. Now here's the cool thing. With a different texture yarn, with a softer texture yarn, it's a little bit looser. You know, this is kind of stiff. And I wish I had brought one of the dolls over. But this setup is kind of messy. And I don't want to move the camera and reveal I'm living foul. But um, the different textures will get you different um, feels for the braid. Like this, like I said, is kind of stiff because it's a small, tiny hook with a thick yarn. Anyway, so we're gonna chain 25. Well, it was, no, it was 20, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let me move that charm down. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now, does anybody remember what's next? What do I do next? See, this is how teaching classes are going to go with me. I have to ask you questions to make sure you're paying attention and make sure that you're getting the information based on if you were watching from the beginning. Pull the charm up to the hook. Right. That's right. Not yet. You got to pay attention, red pieces. So you pull the charm up to the hook. Right. And then slip stitch all the way up. But where am I slip stitching? Where am I putting this uh, slip stitch in? Be more specific, Jamina. So to be more precise, I am slip stitching in the second chain from the hook. Thank you. There you go, Miss Kelly. That's right. So we're going to slip stitch right in there. We're going to ignore the charm because this charm is a placeholder. And we're going to slip stitch all the way up. Look at y'all paying attention. That's right. So this is kind of a precursor uh, for what the university is going to be. Um, no problem. Um, because the pom-pom tutorial class for all of you who are signed up um, is going to be kind of my introduction to teaching. Because for all of you who don't know, that is what my background is in education specifically early childhood education and sociology. Um, <laughs> I appreciate it, Stephanie. Um, but the guarantee, I guarantee that when you have taken all of the courses for my little, my kind of thing, doll making university, you will be fluent in doll making, whether or not it's my own style or you can incorporate your own ideas and style. I really want to take an open-ended creative approach to what I do because I think it's important that people establish their own thing, you know. I'll show you uh, major aspects of mine, but the goal is for you to take what you know and apply it to your own ideas. And so, as you can see, here's the charm all the way down there, and I'm going to cut at this tail, like all the way up here. And I am going to just one last slip stitch and pull it up. See that? To fasten it off. Right now, let me show y'all again. Y'all see this little charm here at the bottom? Charms are really cool. The reason why charms are really cool this way is because for all of you who have little girls who also uh, braid hair or does beading, it's really a cool creative element to their hair being beaded. I wish somebody was as creative as I was when I was, as I am now when I was little, because I'd have surely had all kinds of charms. My niece, we got teddy bears, we got flowers, we got all kinds of charms just for her hair. And this way, it's, it's a very rare occasion that she loses beads. The only time her beads come out is if the rubber bands are weak which we can't help. Sometimes rubber bands have a, you know, poor shelf life, depending on where you get them from. So then we take our yarn needle, because the yarn needle can put two strings in them at the same time, and we put our beads on. And I'm telling y'all, I think I'm gonna use this hair for um, these braids for the troll-inspired dolls. Um, and there you go. Now again, because of the texture of this yarn, it's not very, you know, doesn't move a whole lot. It's a little stiff. So 
So I don't know, maybe I will use this, maybe I won't, I'm not sure. But y'all see, right? Now, I don't have to tell y'all how to install these. You know why I don't have to tell you that? Because if you go to my YouTube channel, you'll see that you can install these braids the same way I install the curls. That is on my YouTube channel. So, this video alone should have given you loads and loads of information as to how you can do your thing. You can, I use 20 stitches with a 2.25 millimeter hook, 2.75. You can do 15 or 10 or 5 or however many, because remember that has to do with the length. You can make them longer if you need to, but now you have the basics for doing this. And if you need a uh, help or an explanation, yeah, see, there you go. See, I don't even know that. There you go, tend to love second. Uh, definitely apply the knowledge that you know. It doesn't have to end at what I'm showing you. It can Y'all can expand it by incorporating what you know. See that? That's what makes teaching so awesome because it really is an engaging back and forth thing. So definitely check out the YouTube channel where I um, install the curly cues. And it's the same method. The cool thing about making the braids this way is that you can literally put them wherever you want to put them on your design. Um, this is also the method I use to create drawstrings for, the, for different things. And again, if you want to make a drawstring for anything, you can decorate the drawstring with beads, right? And charms. And um, just for future reference, different texture yarns give you different results. Um, I even have bigger pony beads. These are standard, but they have bigger pony beads. Um, let's see, what else did I want to share with you all before I ended? That is size. Oh, the other thing, hold on, it just came and went. Wait a minute. I don't know what's going on with my 35-year-old brain. Um, this braid, I was thinking about this braid. Oh, there is another method for braids that I will not share here. It will probably be a part of the hair aspect of my doll making university because this is actually not the only way to do uh, beaded braids. And there is a method where the braid is even thinner than this. Haha, -ha, that's what I wanted to share with you all. But you got to be in it to win it. You got to be a part of it to get those extra things that I will not be able to share here. And there is, like I said, a different way for the beads to go on and to be secure and not fall off. And that it will be a part of my hair sessions because there's multiple hair sessions. I'm going to tell you all that now. There will be multiple hair sessions um, because there's just so many different aspects. And all of my methods have been tested, not just with my dolls, but I've actually shared some techniques with other doll makers just to make sure that they are universal and they're not just uh, that's right. <laughs> so thank y'all so much. Again, check out the YouTube tutorial. I forgot what it's called, but if you follow my channel, it's there. I don't have a whole bunch of videos up. So I'm my kind of thing on Instagram, Twitter. I wish I had a card within reach. I don't think I do. And I'm scared to move too much because if I do, it'll expose the life I'm living of an artist who just really just, I crochet everywhere I am. No problem. You guys are most welcome. Thank you all for uh, signing up for my, my course. You are most welcome. Yes, we are gonna do this thing and you know, you're gonna have some amazingly created dolls um, when we're done with our university. Um, and I'm looking forward to it. So make sure you all have uh, your uh, Facebook pages up and running. Make sure that you have a steady uh, connection because uh, once I add you all to the group, it'll be a secret group. Only you will have access to it in that um, you will have to be, you will be requested and you have to, uh, your, your, or either I'll request you or You'll have to request that I'll give you the name of the group and the materials that you will need in order to do your perfect pom-pom. We will be going over different size pom-pom makers, but they're all going to be clover. We're going to do uh, about two or three different textures of yarn, just so that you can understand that it is 
um, that there it's a universal method and it, uh, it works the same for all different textures so long as you follow the directions. Um, but thank y'all again for joining on this late night uh, live demo. And I will see y'all on Monday. Okay. Good night, guys.